Today's topic is evolution. A scientist approach to evolution. An approach where evidence is examined and hypotheses formed and predictions made and tested. Along the way, many will applaud and many will object. But both reactions are inappropriate. Science, as a discipline, does not cheer for a given outcome of its experiments and investigations. We will not start from scratch today. The topic is too vast. But we will touch on enough detail to give a solid underpinning for the following conclusions. Common descent is a fact. All life on Earth is related through common ancestry. Changes with a single species occur, so-called microevolution. Species themselves come and go, so-called macroevolution. We will not discuss God or intelligent design, worthy topics, but not for science. We will not discuss the origin of life, a worthy scientific topic, but not necessary for our examination of evolution, and a topic which is a lot less certain than our current knowledge of evolution. Universal common descent is the concept that every living thing on Earth is related to every other living thing on Earth, genealogically, genetically related. All modern organisms are descended from one original species. And while in its simplest form, there is a genetic linear progression that branches and forms a tree-like pattern, common descent is not restricted to this linear pattern. That is, different species might recombine and generate hybrids, or genetic material may cross from symbiont to host. Or perhaps by man's own hand, genetic material may be implanted wholesale in another species. None of this changes the fact that every living thing on Earth is related to every other living thing on Earth. A common misconception is that some modern species are descended from other modern species. This is rarely the case. Instead, closely related modern species evolve from a common ancestor that is neither one nor the other. Humans did not come from chimps. Both humans and chimps came from a creature that had more primitive features than either modern humans or modern chimps. If it is to be called science, it must be testable. And for almost 150 years, the research community has done every test imaginable to examine evolution and common descent. And for 150 years, not a single test has ever failed to validate that all life on Earth comes from one common ancestor. Here are just a few of the prestigious scientific organizations that accept this as proven fact. Check it out. So let's look at a little of what has been done. When you look at a phylogenic tree of life diagram, derived from the idea of common descent, 
you immediately notice the pattern of groups within groups. This nesting is unique to the common descent idea. The statistical analysis of these characteristics of organisms grouped with this idea is unusually successful. Species are essentially never found that combine characteristics of different groupings. For example, snakes and lizards are never found with feathers. Only birds have feathers. Birds and crocodiles are never found with differentiated teeth. Only non-marsupial mammals have a placenta. Birds and mollusks are never found with placenta. Only mammals have hair and mammary glands. Amniotic eggs are never found in fish or arthropods. A mix and match of characteristics like these would make it extremely difficult to objectively organize species into nested hierarchies. The consistency of nested hierarchies is another success for common descent. Common descent requires that fossils exhibit a succession of forms from the earliest to the latest. There are many examples but we will show just a few. Since birds evolved from dinosaurs, we expect to find reptile-like fossils with feathers, bird-like fossils with teeth, or bird-like fossils with long reptilian tails. And in fact, we have found very complete sets of reptile-to-bird transitional fossils. There are no morphological gaps. All have the expected possible shapes and forms. In the reptile to mammal sequence, we also have a terrifically complete series of intermediate forms. From the Paleocosora, the Rhapsida, Cynodonta up to primitive mammalia. The fossils reveal that mammals gradually evolved from a reptile ancestor. It is worthwhile to pause here and examine a type of change that is often mentioned as impossible. It appears that two of the bones in the middle ear of mammals correspond to two bones that are in the jaw structure of reptiles. The green and red bones in these diagrams are the bones in question. And if we look at the developing fetus, sure enough, two developing bones in the reptile head become part of the jaw, while the corresponding bones in the mammal fetus become part of the middle ear. How can jaw bones evolve to become middle ear bones? The fossil record is now so thorough, including a complete skull of Hadracodia mui and cranial and jaw material from Ripponomimus and Gobi conodon. We can see the progression as it happened. And in the case of our own emergence, there are more than two dozen transitional fossils intermediate between modern humans and our own ape-like ancestors.